Okay, here's part three of the unit review. It looks like there's going to be four parts, but uh, here we go. I want to go back to the last the last question because I I rushed that, so I want to be clear on what I what I was saying. So this has um, a total energy of twenty joules, and so it, I was asking what is the kinetic energy at three meters? Well, if you go to three meters, you go up. And then over, you'll see that it has it has 15 joules of potential energy. So that's the potential energy is 15 joules, but its total energy is 20. So it must have a kinetic energy of 5 joules. So the answer to that last question on the the last part, part two, was 5 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, moving right along. Let's see how um, you can use energy to um, do projectile motion problems. Here's an object. It's um, being fired up at 3 meters per second. But um, I'm going to tell you one of its components, its X component, is 1 meter per second. And they want to know how high up this is going to go. Well, if you want to know how high up that's going to go, you can say E equals E prime. Can you use E equals E prime? To tell me how high up it's going to go, um, E equals E prime. Try that. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, the way you do this is you say the kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to, at the top, it's got two types of energy. It's got kinetic energy and potential energy. So um, the energy at the 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 kinetic energy at the top it just has this one meter per second the y component goes to zero but it still has the x component the whole way it's got the same x component so let's see the energy at the top is or at the bottom is all kinetic so one half the mass oh did I not tell you the mass turns out the mass will cancel so um, but let's just put in a mass it's um, two kilograms make it two kilograms that will make the it easy to do it don't, you don't need to know the mass though um, so it's going to be one half times the mass times v squared so that's going to be nine joules of kinetic energy is equal to now up here it only has one meter per second of energy of uh, kinetic of velocity so its kinetic energy is one half two kilograms times that squared so that's going to give me one joule that's how much kinetic energy I have, plus um, mgh. So um, m is 2 kilograms times, you see how every term has an m in it? We could have canceled those. mgh, sneak an h in there. So it looks like when I solve for this, it's going to be 8 joules divided by 20 uh, kilograms meet kilograms meters over second squared that's what h is so that's eight that's like four tenths isn't it so h is 0.4 meters you might convince yourself that those units work out okay moving right along um Okay, with this one, I'm going to tell you that the potential energy of this object is 40 joules up here. That's the potential. It has no kinetic up here. Halfway down, when it's ha exactly halfway down from our potential energy equals zero line, could you tell me what the kinetic energy is? What will be the kinetic energy? Okay, go ahead and pause. All right, so um, halfway down, since UG is equal to... UG is equal to MGH. If you have half the H, then you must only have 20 joules of potential energy. Well, that means that um, that other energy went somewhere. If there's no air resistance, if there's no air resistance, then the K, the kinetic energy halfway down, has to be 20 joules so that they add up to give you 40. Okay, imagine you have a function that tells you how the potential energy changes with x. If you want to get the force at 2 meters, um, how would you get the force at 2 meters? Go ahead and try that. I'll see you in a moment. 
Okay, we're back. The force is the negative derivative of u with respect to x. So take the negative derivative of this, so that's going to be negative 12. You leave those units alone. Um, and that's going to be x squared. If you want that at 2 meters, then you just throw in the 2 meters. That's going to be 4 times 12. It's going to be 48 newtons. And it's going to be a negative 48 newtons. Going on to the next one. Um, if you have a potential energy function that looks like this, and you're told that the mass is 1 kilogram of this object, and the total energy is 200 joules, a total energy of 200 joules, then um, um, here's the question. Will this object, if the total is 200 joules, will it, will it be able to reach the half meter mark? Go ahead and think about that and pause. Okay, we're back. It can't because at the half meter mark, it's got like 300 joules. It would need 300 joules of energy, and it's only got 200, so it can't reach that. It can reach between 1 and 4, however. It can reach between 1 and 4. Okay, um, here's another question. Do, um, if Where is the, if it could reach these different spots, where A or B is the force greater? Now, it can't reach those because I told you that it's 200 joules, but if it could, where are they? Where is the force the greatest, at A or at B? The answer is that, go ahead and think about that. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, the answer is A. A is steeper. Because it's steeper, the, the graph is steeper there, the force is bigger. The force is actually going to be a positive. It's away from the origin. It's positive here because the slope is negative. And this slope is positive, so this that means the force is negative, so it's toward the origin. Okay, so so there you have it. That's that one. Um, one other thing. If I told you that um, it was released at the one meter mark, it's released from rest at the one meter mark, how fast will it be going when it gets to the two meter mark? So it's released from rest. We're told it's released from rest at the one meter mark. How fast will it be going at the two meter mark? So one meter and the two meter. So the one meter mark, when it's released, it's going to be 200 joules. At the 2 meter mark, it's got 100 joules. So it must have a kinetic energy that makes up for that difference. Since this, this is 1 kilogram, then we know that um, it's going to be, what, 100 joules is equal to, um, if that's 1 kilogram, it's going to be equal to 1 half V squared. So I'll bring the half, I'll multiply both sides by a half, and we're left with 200 joules. And um, so you can take the square root of that and get the speed. The speed would be equal to, um, what, about 14.1 meters per second. Okay, I'll see you at the next one. I'll see you at the next review.